you're listening to In The Books, a podcast where we discuss on-screen adaptations of our favourite book. I'm Michelle. You can find me at Musings on all the socials. And I'm Rita. And I'm at Annoying Rita. <laughs> on just the one social. The gram. <laughs> the gram. Uh, welcome to episode five in our ongoing series of podcasts on normal people. This week we will be discussing episode five and the corresponding chapter in the novel. To the recap! So much gusto. Appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> We begin the episode where we left off last week, with Marianne and Connell each in bed staring at their phones. They're very, very old-looking phones. <laughs> Connell dials Marianne, asking if everything is okay. He assumes that if he's getting a midnight call, something dramatic might have happened. Fair enough. Marianne reassures him and explains that she has missed him in her life, and she's hoping they can be friends. Yes. Connell grins on the other end. Yay. <laughs> A rare win in his life. Yes. Some indeterminate amount of time later, Connell arrives at Marianne's flat wearing his grown up shirt. Oh my god, guys, there were buttons. He's a big boy. <laughs> yes. And she shows him into her living room where all her most annoying friends are sat and Joanna. They immediately start grilling him for info on Marianne at school, which is <sighs> awkward, awkward topic. Yes. For obvious reasons. Uh, but he masterfully avoids the troubling parts and just sort of tells them she went around destroying people, quote unquote. <laughs> just true. He watches on in confusion as her friends call each other fucking monsters and passive aggressively snipe at each other over their glasses of wine <laughs> if you haven't been in that friend group at one point in your life i mean we've all been there and then we've yeah. all left them because it was a good yeah it's just it's just a cluster um let's see we get another beautifully shot music montage of connell working late in the library working a shift as a waiter at an Italian restaurant, and then driving all the way to Sligo for his weekend job at the petrol station. Intercut, we see Marianne and Gareth have very dispassionate-looking sex before turning over and sleeping on opposite sides of the bed. I sense trouble in paradise. <laughs> uh, we then cut to Marianne Connell and her gang of mates sitting at the pub. The tension between Gareth and Jamie bubbles over into a pissing contest of a pool game. They are both clearly vying for Marianne's attention, but she keeps looking over at Connell. <laughs> because, of course. Duh. Between the three of them? Who would you look at? Okay, um, so let's put them in order. Let's go off topic. Connell. Okay, yes. First, Gareth. Obviously. Gareth, and then Jamie yeah. last. I would yeah. even say... Quite a big gap between Gareth and Jamie. Yes. Okay, same yes. page. Keep going. Yes. Okay. Uh, Connell and her head. Oh. <laughs> Connell and her head. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That, that, I see why you, yeah. She, uh, Connell and her. She and Connell head out for a smoke break, and she asks him if he is hating every second of their night out because the man looks uncomfortable as hell. He tells her he doesn't understand them because they are a bit different from his own friends. Marianne, offended, tells him at the end of the day they are her friends. It's different for you, an iconic callback, which makes Connell do a smirk cringe face like he recognizes he has no leg to stand on. No, sir. <laughs> yes. Not today. No. Um... When they head back inside, they find that Teresa has joined the gang. Marianne watches on with jealousy as Connell greets her friend. Teresa seems nice. Poor mm -hmm. Teresa. Yeah. The next day, Marianne meets Jamie outside her lecture and asks him if there's any gossip from last night. She left early. Jamie tells her that Connell left not long after her with Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie tells her that he can't really picture her hanging out with Connell at all and asks if, if he is secretly smart. Right, mm -hmm. This is where I want to, like, rip into Jamie's heart. Oh, yeah. Yank it out of his body and then force yeah. it down his throat. Yep. Um, <laughs> he can't possibly be smart. He's poor. Exactly. Marianne, clearly defensive, calls Connell the smartest person she knows. 
Across town, Connell is just getting home and still in the clothes he was wearing the night before, no less. Oh, oh, oh. What a shame. Niall yes. begins to tease him, but Connell steadily ignores him and continues on his much on to his much needed shower. Right. Yes. Right. Shower yeah. at her place, Connell. Anyway, <laughs> Connell heads to a lecture and on his way out is stopped by a fellow student who very flirty and begs to read his choice. <laughs> he has become a campus celebrity, receiving an almost impossible grade. She's invited him to join the literary society, which he absolutely should do. Absolutely. Speaking of society, everyone's fave committee member Gareth is complaining about the drama in one of his meetings <laughs> to Marianne. He can't even pretend to give two shits and ask her boyfriend <laughs> to please stop prattling on so she can finish her assigned reading. <laughs> uh, kind of part tensions. of the deal when you get one of those, you have to pretend. Yeah. Uh -huh. The tension increases. We then cut to Marianne's flat where, by contrast, she and Connell are reading in peaceful companionship. She breaks the silence to ask him what it's like being the top of his class. Connell warns her not to be too impressed. He is just one of the few people who is bothering to do the reading. Everyone else shows up to argue about books they haven't read with complete conviction. He explains that he envies their self-confidence because he feels like he's walking around trying on 100 different versions of himself. Marianne looks surprised and tells him that it doesn't seem like that from the outside, and Connell explains that he has always felt this insecure. He asks her if her friends know about them, and she admits... She is too embarrassed about the way she allowed him to treat her to tell them. She asks him if he ever considered asking her to the Debs. Connell has to be honest and admits it never occurred to him. Ouch! Uh, he asks if she would have said yes, and she begins to cry as she admits she would have. <sighs> Connell tells her everyone knew about them anyway, that they weren't even horrible about it. He realizes now that the shame and anxiety were all in his head. There, is no re there was no reason why anyone would care. He apologizes, and Marianne forgives him. And it's the most beautiful apology I've ever seen. It might be, question mark, the only apology I've ever seen a man. Like a sincere, long, heartfelt... Can you think of a sincere, long, heartfelt apology from any other man? That was detailed, that went into why they were wrong. Yeah, this I'm, is depressing. You're just coming up with yeah. a blank, aren't you? Yeah, it's never... Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I, we'll talk more about that, I'm sure. I'm just so. think, saying, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next morning, Marianne wakes up with birds chirping in the background like a Disney princess. <laughs> she, then, <laughs> <laughs> she then walks over to the dorms and breaks up with Gareth. She's confused <laughs> and tells her everyone thinks they're great together. Marianne is doubtful that's true actually and probably tells him <laughs> that isn't what she wants anymore so he gives a shit what everyone else thinks um, <laughs> she then meets up with Connell who's offered to drive her to a party they're invited to Marianne is drinking straight gin out of a hip flask, super classy <laughs> and yes. is needling Connell on information about Teresa in a very confusing way where she's like hey are you fighting nobody's <laughs> seeing her is it serious? <laughs> That's very confusing. <laughs> All he's willing to tell her is that it's casual. Marianne then announces she broke up with Gareth. Convenient. Uh, he asks if that's why she's drinking gin on gin on gin. She admits it didn't really hurt that much. They weren't really a very good fit. Oh, surprise. I mean, the glee. The glee. Mm -hmm. like, I'll make it less obvious. I know, right? Oh, jeez. Come on, the two... I'm <laughs> Woo -hoo! Um, The two arrive at the house party and split. Marianne heads outside to go smoke pot with her friends and make fun of Gareth. God. Um, destroying people. Yes, that's, 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 that's our Marianne. Um, a few hours later, she is drunk and stoned and heads back inside the house to look for Connell. When she finds him, she begins making insane, jealous accusations about him smelling like Teresa's perfume. And he asks, and he laughs, and tells her that Teresa's not at the party. 
<laughs> I mean, wow. You uh, she a- <laughs> you. <laughs> she asks if he likes Teresa better um, than her and begins fingering his chain, you know, the chain. Uh, <laughs> Connell tells her she's drunk or she wouldn't be asking things like that. Um, is she better in bed than me? She says, but he still tells her what she wants to hear and reciprocates when she kisses him. She whispers that she wants to go upstairs. And he pulls back and laughs that they're actually upstairs already. <laughs> um, when she asks him to I fuck her. <laughs> yes. When he asks, when she asks him to fuck her, he looks in physical pain as he is forced to reject her advances. She is pretty wasted. Um, she asks if that's the only reason and then tries to bribe him with drugs she doesn't have. <laughs> I love the solution is like, well, you can be wasted too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he laughs again. And after they kiss one more time, he tells her he will see her in the morning. <laughs> Oh, Marianne, no shame. Uh, I know, right? Marianne just, wakes up just... the next the next morning looking and probably feeling like a fucking mess, like mascara, half down her face. Uh, she hobbles outside and finds Connell waiting for her. Like he said, he would, He kind of looks like he's her disappointed dad. Just come yes. Pick her up after yes. The <laughs> uh, she hops in the car and he drives her to her flat. While in the car, she apologizes for coming on to him. She realizes it would kind of be difficult to do the whole friendship thing if one of them was always trying to sleep with the other. <laughs> oh, have I got a book for you? <laughs> uh, when they get inside, Marianne has a shower and comes out in a cool vintage looking robe because this is, this is Marianne. She's got a cool vintage look for every occasion. Yes. Hannel is sitting in the kitchen. Seemingly waiting for her. He looks kind of confused. Uh, she undoes her robe and he kisses her naked body. Head to the bedroom and they have sex. Needless to say, this is way more enthusiastic than the previous scene with Gareth. Oh, R.I.P. Gareth. <laughs> As they lie in each other's arms post-coital, Marianne tells him that it's not like other people. He agrees and tells her he thinks they'll be Fine. Famous last words. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Every time he says they'll be fine. Of course. <laughs> I giggle. Like it's so funny. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's like whenever someone says, What could possibly go wrong? It's like, no. Everything. No. Don't utter those words. You have now called down the heavens <laughs> to plague you. With everything that can go wrong. <laughs> Beautiful. I really wanted to post that image on Instagram, but was like, well, that will get our account <laughs> yeah. suspended. So yeah. mm-hmm. can't do that. But honestly, one of the best lines of the whole show, and you never see any screen caps of it because of the sheer amount of nudity. Yeah, because it was, it was nudity, nude, nude, nude. Full nude. nude. And it's just like, you couldn't have just given us headshots for that that line, just so that I could get it. It's just a good line anyway. Not important. Um, oh, gosh. Priorities. Uh, what did you think of the episode? Well, they just keep, um, they just keep impressing me with how beautiful each one of these 30 minute snippets of life uh, are. Um, I thought it was lovely. Um, it showed, uh, you know, the, the everyday life that, uh, Connell goes through, you know, with all of his various jobs, you know, to, to, to be able to afford living and going to school at Trinity. I love um, that montage. It's so mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you, uh, look at what Marianne is, going through at the same time, you know, with her kind of dispassionate uh, conversations with Gareth and, you know, her time with her friends. And, you know, it's it's like you're looking at these two very different lives that are are taking place. And yet uh, these two these two lives come together in moments of 
you know, really just loveliness. Like when they were together reading. Oh my just God. in peace. I mean, you know, it's like there's all of this kind of craziness going on in in both of their lives and that they're able to come together and just have a peaceful moment of reading. And Lord, it's just if, give me a man who I can read with. That's just <laughs> he's, he's not playing fucking <laughs> Xbox or whatever they do now. Probably PlayStation Five. Like, can you turn it down? No. This is important. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I loved it. Um, what what did you think of the episode? I mean, I don't think there's ever a bad episode of Normal People. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> all hits, no skips, as we used yes. to say back in oh, the day. Very um, nice. I also have to say, like, I didn't cry once this week, which is mm -hmm. I usually cry at least like two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> Unabashedly positive episode. Yes. With a happy ending, pun intended. Uh, <laughs> and obviously there were like moments of pathos because this is normal people and you have to of feel course. you have to feel a bit sad. But <laughs> <laughs> it was just a good vibe. Like it really lots was. Of, lots of happy things happened. Mm-hmm. So yeah. brace yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna be fine. Dun dun dun. <laughs> You are not emotionally mature enough yet to be fine. Exactly. And also, even when you are emotionally mature enough to be fine, life. <laughs> yes. Life will come up and go, okay, you're doing way too well. Slap. Slap. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a happy episode. Happy, yes. happy, happy. I Did you notice how almost every line in mm -hmm. this episode? Mm-hmm. It's like transcribed scene, a scene yep. from the book. Accuracy yep. everywhere. Mm hmm I mean, the more the more and more I see this adaptation, um, the more and more you just have to appreciate the uh the brilliance of this book. Right. I love how <laughs> you know? intertwined they are. Because yeah. I don't think you could you can't get the show of, without the book, obviously. But mm -hmm. there's like the show enhances the book, and the book enhances the show, and they sort of feel yep. like they've merged. And mm -hmm. I feel like if all adaptations loved the source material as much as oh. this show did, it was like, hey, this book is really good. Why don't we try putting it literally, literally on screen? Not mm -hmm. the shell of it, not the concept of it. Let's mm -hmm. literally put it on screen. Yeah, yeah. So many works deserve that, and then they mm -hmm. get ripped apart. Yeah, I just, I, I am, I'm in awe of what they have managed to achieve, and you know, it, it's, it all comes down to the, the, the skill that we are seeing in these actors. I mean. I know that that we're we're going to talk about the apology. Um, oh, heavily. Well, I want to talk about. It. <laughs> oh my God! Um, it was it, it. This really was masterful. Thirty minutes of television, and it's only thirty minutes. I mean, that's the mind blowing thing about it was that they were able to pack all of that into thirty minutes. And do it with such grace and tenderness. Well, I mean, I well, because they have Sally God. Rooney at the heart of this. And yes, she... and and the intimacy coordinator. Because <laughs> yeah. by God, by God, that could have gone so much worse. But I mean, it was it was absolutely beautiful. It was, and yet again, not in a way that made me feel kind of gross. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, right, right. It feels like tender and loving. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm not creepy for watching it. Like, yes. this is a reflection of their relationship. Usually, mm -hmm. like, when we get into this amount of nudity, <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> usually watching, like, French cinema, and there's always <laughs> a level of which 
the director's <laughs> male and like 70 years old and I'm kind of like, is Ew. this okay? Ew. How much consent was there? Uh, she's very young. Are we okay Ew. with this? Like that's Ew. always playing Ew. in the background and I don't have to worry about it in this yeah. scenario. Uh, everyone yeah. got their consent and it was fine. Yeah, it was just, it's just beautiful. So well done. Sally I love, Rooney. I just also love like, the pacing as well because you mm -hmm. there's, there's the apology scene that we'll talk about, but it was really long. It's a really mm -hmm. fucking long scene of two people staring at each other and talking with lots mm -hmm. of pauses. Mm -hmm. No one in their right mind would have done that <laughs> in a traditional yeah. script. They would have been mm -hmm. like, oh my God, we've been here for two pages, let's cut. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, Sally it Rooney was, was like, "No, we will have mm -hmm. every single line from the book because <laughs> mm -hmm. every line is fucking important. And yeah, so every line will be said, <laughs> okay? And that, it gives the the actors a chance to really perform their characters. Yes, and to sit in that space, you know, to sit to sit in the space of silence when they need to. It always you know, makes in me order wonder, to... like, are other actors? Oh capable of doing this but they're just not being given the material uh, yeah given the opportunity to do that i mean i know one of the things that you know i talk about at work when we're talking about you know effective meeting facilitation um and being able to be comfortable in silence you know if you're asking a group of individuals a question or or something along those lines to not fill that space, that void immediately because it's uncomfortable to have, you know, a silence in a room of people. Um, and, you know, having to get to the point where you're comfortable with that silence. Um, and we see that in this episode, uh, and in the, the scene where we have um, the apology and it's beautiful because that's that's how it would go, especially for someone, you know, like Connell, who is like digging through his thoughts to, to try and um, not come up with anything that is going to be dishonest or uh, anything along those lines. But, you know. He's having to suss out the feelings that he's experiencing and ha he experienced and be able to articulate it in a way that is going to be honest with this woman who he loves and will love. It's, it's, <laughs> it felt like such a clumsy approach at it, which uh -huh. makes it feel more real because he's yes. not going into this conversation going, this is the conversation where I'm going to apologize, mm -hmm. you know, like it's planned out. This yeah. is just a, fl a natural thought progression mm -hmm. of how yep. this conversation turns. And yep. that makes it feel more honest and authentic. And the, mm -hmm. the dialogue feels like something people would, okay, intellectuals would really say to yes. each other. <laughs> um, people who are as, uh, <laughs> let's just say politely nerdy. Politely nerdy. Yes. As these two and just overwrought sometimes with their own emotions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, it just, and the fact that he was able to admit, to be honest with her and say, no, I wouldn't have asked you to the tip. Yeah, I know, it would right? Hurt her, but that, oh. I think the honesty of it may have regained some of her respect mm -hmm. because yeah. more than anything, women want the truth. Mm -hmm. We don't want the bullshit. Right. You know, we um, want the truth. We want the truth, even if it is painful. And, um, you know, the, you know, her response, oh my gosh, just the, the, the gentle falling of tears. And then she looks annoyed at herself that she's crying because she's I like, know. this is unimportant to me now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, we've all been there. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, yeah, go ahead and convince yourself, Marianne, that this isn't important to you. It's incredibly important to you, um, you know, for you to hear these words from from this man. So, oh, uh, God, I love this show so much. And as you were speaking about the comfortable silence, I was thinking mm -hmm. that's that's something that she wants. And she's definitely not getting it from Gareth. <laughs> no. Stop talking. No. Poor blessed 
Carrot RIP, <laughs> we will never see you again. You were a short king. <laughs> oh, but yeah, the, the the breakup with him, uh, so Marianne. <laughs> I mean, it was just it was just so Marianne. Um It was and ruthless. He just, yeah, and he just was like staring at her like, What the actual fuck? <laughs> Where's where is this coming from? Because it seemed to just come completely out of left field. And he's just kind of standing there like, wait, what? Huh? I mean, all of his reason reasonings were incredibly dumb, like Everyone says we're good together. Yeah. And I like her. Do they know? <laughs> Just do they actually say that? <laughs> Brutal. Um, <laughs> I can't imagine ever doing anything that mean to someone. Honestly. I'm pretty, I'm pretty ruthless when I have to be, but I was like, oh my God. Um, I'm not sure. Question mark Gareth deserves this level of emotional no. attachment. No, um, Jamie, Jamie would, of course, but, um... This man but, is uh, fine. He's uh, a little, uh, yeah. mean, He needs to stop buttoning up his shirts. That's... Uh, <laughs> his political views... This is views, not the 70s, man. He, his political views are abhorrent. He talks yes. too much about himself, but he's a fundamentally okay-ish person. <laughs> you just want to be like, hey, I'm not really feeling it anymore. Sorry. This level of cruelty was <laughs> but, Well, you know, they they you know, Connell said, you know, that she was basically walking around destroying people. That's that's that that's pretty much what she did. I feel like she just completely shuts down emotionally from people when she's done. Yeah. She's like starts yeah. a switch. And like she yep. is she just couldn't empathize with maybe I don't know, like, maybe attempt to be nicer? <laughs> she's like, nope, don't have time for this. We're done. Bye. Because she's not, <laughs> like, she's like, I'm, I'm a fundamentally cold person. It's like, no, you're not, but... No. <laughs> God, you can be. <laughs> yes. You can be. Yes. Yes. You've, 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 got, you've got that skill in you. Maybe she just, like, turned... She was just like, no, I'm into Connell now, so I'm going to turn off all my emotions <laughs> and just be ruthless. Wow. Snip, snip, snip. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Lord. Speaking of ruthlessness, her friends were even bigger bitches. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. I think his name is Philip, who I assumed was Gareth's friend, was even making fun of him. I was mm-hmm. like, son, I don't think we'll ever see that man again. But I was like, really? <laughs> I mean, I, in reading, I will say that in you know, listening to the book, well, I found that, you know, a number of Marianne's friends were, you know, like pretty vapid. Um, I didn't, they didn't come across to me as just kind of ew, uh, (laughs) as they, as they do in the show. In the show, you're just basically sitting there going, oh God, these people, it's, it's like a little pit of vipers. Um, <laughs> this isn't about you, Joanne. Nothing about what we're saying is about Joanne. <laughs> yeah, Joanna, I know. I I is, know. You, you can stay. Everyone else, we need an intervention because I mean, Peggy, <laughs> Peggy, come forward, come here. Yeah. What a conniving little bitch. Yeah. Oh my lord. <laughs> Why is she so adamant that she knows what Marianne deserves? I don't know. I she, don't know. But uh, yeah, her her friends are a piece of work, and uh, you know she was saying, "Well, they are my friends. Well, you could do so much better, Mary." <laughs> Ironically, I think Teresa would have been a better friend. <laughs> yes, absolutely. She seems then, nice. Yeah. Then the the rest of those those uh, uh, no, thank you. Although, like maybe we're just like really out of touch because we're not in our. Early Not 20s our anymore. early twenties. Like, in my early twenties, I would have been like, "These people are fun. They're all bitchy like me." And then I would have realized <laughs> that no, I'm not as bitchy as these people. No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm like, that's oh. what I think I want in a friendship. You know, when you're drunk and you're like, this is all fun and everyone's having yes. a good time. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, what did they say to me? <laughs> <laughs> that's this group of friends. Like they would yeah. just be fundamentally mean to each other. Call it yep. humor. Oh my God, mm-hmm. now I'm having too many flashbacks. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just, move along. Let's move um, along. Talk about Jamie's comment and his... Uh, I think in the book this was just one, just a generic friend, but in the mm-hmm. show they made it Jamie. Yeah. That Connell is smart is something surprising. <laughs> yeah, honestly. It's like, you know something? You don't have to like grow up in you know the upper middle class um, and above in order to have a brain, dude. <laughs> I think because he, okay. he falls into the stereotypical... A, he's working class, but he also has a bit of a... I suppose in America it's the jock aesthetic. Yes. I don't know yeah. if they have like an equivalent over here, but, you know, sporty. <laughs> sporty, he looks, yeah. He looks like he could plow a field. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we know that, that he is in he is very talented when it comes to uh, football. You know, yeah. so, you know, he, he is athletic. So he can't possibly be smart. Exactly. Because, you know, anybody who's athletic is thick as a stump. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And Oy. all women that are hot are bimbos. That's that's how that works. Yeah. I think like... I, I, um, I need to slap him. He's such a dick. Jamie yeah, and Gareth, to a certain extent, like to be like the loudest people in the room. You know, uh-huh. just they love like the uh-huh. cool game. They have to be the center of attention. And they're like... Look at all the books I've read. Look uh-huh. at the obscure concepts I'm familiar with. It's like if you're not shoving down other people's throats, mm-hmm. all of the things you know, then you're not smart. Right. Connell doesn't actually do that. He sits mm-hmm. in the corner and he listens and he observes like an actual smart person. Mm-hmm. And if you notice, all the women in their friend group like Connell. Like there's a yep. literal scene where all the girls, yeah, I like Connell. Yeah, <laughs> the girls like him because he's not constantly talking. He listens exactly. to them. He mm-hmm. responds to their questions. Mm-hmm. He probably I mean, remembers what they've said. Yeah, it's you know, so I, and yeah, how you know Connell is always talking about how insecure he is. Um, it's amazing how secure he really is when it comes to you know, his intelligence, you know, his just way of being, you know, Gareth and Jamie are taking up all of the airtime in the room and boasting about all of the stuff that they've accomplished because they're insecure. They are. Yeah. And so I feel like it's it's like very like different sides of the same coin of fragile mm -hmm. male insecurity. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Connell does have insecurities, uh, clearly. Um, but you know, when it comes to kind of you know who he is, um, kind of on the day to day, he's hands down got got it <laughs> more than than Gareth and Jamie ever will. And it's gonna make him a popular with the ladies as well. So yes, thing, indeed. Because- just fucking listen. If any man is out there listening to us looking for tips, <laughs> just shut up. Shut up and listen. <laughs> listen. We have things to say. Yes. Okay? Listen to this <laughs> podcast. Well, like, there's no way they made it this far. <laughs> oh, oh. We're not bitter. Oh, Lord. We're okay. Mm. Uh, yes. Okay, Marianne and Connell. So, mm-hmm. the forgiveness scene. I mean, we've already yes. waxed poetic. Yes. Is that the expression? Is it lyrical? We wax it, it, no, wax, wax poetic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I feel like you could wax many things. Yes. <laughs> um, <sighs> that's that's the best scene. I know we're going to oh, yeah. talk about like what's the best scene later on, but like mm-hmm. for, that that that's it. That's the best scene. That's it. I hands down. I feel so like... far. It's, it's so far in the the series. It's the best scene of the series. I think there's another scene that might rival it later on. We can talk Ooh. about what's the best scene. But, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I think, yes, so far, the best scene. Yep. 
Yep. Maybe one of the best in TV history question mark. <laughs> Um, it's pretty pretty damn powerful i i know i watched it like three times just like rewound it and watch rewound watch i posted it on our instagram page yes follow us at in the s- books at instagram <laughs> and i saw that <laughs> i ended up watching it like i don't know 16 times just trying to edit it because yeah. trying to get it from the widescreen into the it's the whole thing trying to get it into the dimensions for instagram reels was like <laughs> <laughs> above my pay grade I'm, oh. I'm too old for this shit but anyway uh, you, I did a, you did a beautiful job my daughter thank you um <laughs> <laughs> it was complicated <laughs> so i ended up watching like each individual shot oh my gosh <laughs> um breaking it down into minute details and i was like this shit's amazing i'd like to watch just like uh what's it called the dailies every oh, angle yeah that would be amazing yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It feels a bit like watching a play. Mm-hmm. You know that electric feeling you have when you're watching a really good play? And yeah. there's silence, complete silence, mm-hmm. but you can sort of hear the outside world. Um, yes. And it's just, it felt sort of magical watching them. Mm-hmm. It's just two people talking to each other. Yeah. And I, I remember, I remember that I was holding my breath as as he was building towards the apology um and when he finally said you know i'm i'm sorry uh it was just like oh he did it he's a big boy wow wow (laughs) well done kano (laughs) i think why it works so well is not just like he could have just said hey i'm sorry and that would have been good but the the level of depth of like Mm -hmm. i'm these are the things that were happening in my life that made me feel paranoid about these things. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, everyone knows. And then she thinks he's mad that she told someone. And she's like, God, mm-hmm. no, I'm not mad about that. Like, he immediately shuts that down. Mm-hmm. Like, the level of wit- depth of he, like, has to explain every detail to her. It's not just, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It's, mm-hmm. you have to understand me- understand what I was doing and thinking Mm-hmm. at those moments because then you will understand me as a person what we both went through why we both went through it mm-hmm. and why i'm sorry not yeah. just that i'm sorry it's like it's more about getting her to understand him as a person yeah yeah and you know he is sharing that um because you know we we oftentimes talk about you know, if you're making an apology, you know, don't try to excuse it or explain it away or something like that. You know, you want to you know, like don't offer it sincerely. Like, the moon <laughs> made me do it. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And when he was talking about what all was going on, it didn't come across as if he was trying to explain his behavior away. Um you know, it was, you know, he was, as you said, setting the scene, um, you know, and so, you know, in some cases, it may come across as someone trying to explain away their bad behavior, but it sure as hell didn't come across that way. And that's um, credit to Rooney, um, as well as our dear Paul uh, and his performance. I want to like... Damn. I have like such com- weird feelings about Paul where that's, yeah, they're sexual, but I also want to adopt him. Like, I just want to give him a really <laughs> big hug. <laughs> stop being so sad in all your films. Give me a hug. <laughs> um, despite all of the sadness, I mm-hmm. think Marianne drunk flirting is potentially the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I mean, amazing. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> so it bad. was so bad. So you bad. know, I was like, I got drugs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> it was just so bad. I felt so bad for her. But um, I love, I love that he finds it so adorable. Like he's giggling yes. along with her. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he's like, uh. I will I will be here in the morning. So <laughs> And then, you know, you described it you described it beautifully 
um, you know, when she sees him the next morning that he, he's got this like disappointed dad vibe <laughs> that is coming on so hard. It this was like just... loitering on the lawn, like, well, yes. well you're late. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was just that was just brilliant. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, poor Marianne. It's like, oh my gosh, you're such a dork. I love you so much. Love her. She's so bad at flirting. I also love the scene where they're like going to the party before she's even drunk. She's trying to flirt with him. Yes, <laughs> she's so bad. It's... Oh my god, I broke up with Gareth. <laughs> when, she, when Wait, she's asking what? about Teresa and she's like yes. you fighting it doesn't make any fucking sense like she just wants details and she doesn't know how to interact with yes. other humans so she's like how do I get information ask him if he's mad at her this girl that he met once are you mad at her <laughs> oh my god it just makes Connell really confused the whole yes. time I think like <laughs> he's, he's he's baffled he's completely baffled by the whole thing like he kind of uh, understands she's flirting but he doesn't understand why <laughs> oh my god i'm crying i'm laughing so hard <laughs> it's like you know Teresa's not even at the party <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh lord, have mercy. <laughs> oh no, when she asks to go upstairs, that is actually yes. stupid. Yes, it's like we're already upstairs. There's only two floors, hun. You've walked up, I've seen you walk, you just walk, you're right, you're standing next to the stairs. Oh my god. Oh, oh, she's oh so, it's brilliant. She's just precious. brilliant. Oh, oh sweet baby. Her. <laughs> like a little Bambi deer walking around on her drunk legs. Okay. Serious <sighs> sex talk. Yes, yes. Yes. Serious <sighs> cinema. Um Oh yeah. I don't know, it, like it... <laughs> I don't know uh how much detail you want to go into this. Um uh, kind of awkward too. That's a dress. The elephant in the room, otherwise known as yes, full frontal nudity. I know. Mm. I Such know. Such an outlier in because it so rarely happens. Um, and I can, like, honestly, I only the... think of one of the time I've seen it recently. <laughs> when Wasn't was that? that? Recent? I saw the film Shame in cinemas. Oh, okay. Which was actually in 2011. I've just googled it. That's ages ago. <laughs> that was I didn't a while know it was going to happen, and it's like the first shot of the film. Oh my like, gosh! Oh, okay. Oh well, hello. All right, but then that was mm. cinema. <laughs> yeah, I initially when I was doing my first um, watch of the episode, initially I was like, "Wait, is he Nate? Nate?" He's they, actually oh, naked. Why is it so whoa. surprising when a man is naked? Look, <laughs> because it is something that happens so rarely. Because you know the 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 twig and berries are precious, and you know can't be seen. Well, even I've though seen everyone's vagina, you know exactly. It's like okay, I'm I'm seeing straight up labia right here, right there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I um, mean, I I grew up in like eighties and nineties sex thrillers. My parents mm -hmm. were absolutely terrible about, well, I don't know. They just didn't really give a shit about nudity. They were like, hey, you're seven. <laughs> okay. She's naked. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we're European. It's not that big of a deal. You go to the beach, everyone has their tits out. You know? Yeah. It's not shocking. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh God, if a man takes over... his dress shirt off during a sex scene, it's like, oh! it's like do you know how many sex scenes I've seen where the man does not take any of his clothes off? <laughs> Just stays fully clothed. <laughs> oh, it's... God. I mean, it, it's standard operating procedure in uh, K-dramas <laughs> where it's like, okay, you're actually getting in bed wearing 
a sweater and trousers. <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. The misogyny All right. runs so deep. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I was pretty, I was pretty floored. Um, and then once I got over the shock, I was like, well done. Bravo. <laughs> because, you know, damn it, we're going to, we're going to have seen some a shit equality. Ton of daisy naked. Yeah, we're going to have some equality going on right now. Thank you very much. So, it's yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I've just seen way, like that, the previous sex scene was mm -hmm. so much nudity for Daisy. Yeah, I know. She I know. really was not. She, there was not a stitch on her. It's just good for Paul and Daisy's relationship, especially for Daisy to see that you know she's not the only one getting naked out there. <laughs> right. She's got a partner that is also as vulnerable mm -hmm. in these scenes. Yes. Otherwise, it Agreed. feels exploitative. And I think that's Agreed. probably why they still remain such good friends. Because it's like, hey, I got it mm -hmm. all out. You did too. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I, uh, you know, we said earlier that, uh, you know, the intimacy coordinator thing was a stroke of genius. Uh, and that again, and I'm hoping that we will, you know, should we have more, uh, sex scenes as we move forward that we will, we will come away with the same feelings of, of not discomfort. Um, but this is part of the story because it is important. It's not in the story because it's salacious or anything along those lines. It is part of their story. Not that there's anything wrong with salacious. No! It's just about what the story is. That's, that's not what this is about. And uh, I, I really appreciate that. But not, not this. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's very well done. Brava. Favorite performance? Oh God! How to pick? Well, we've, well, look, we've got to say we've done favorite scene. Yeah, we've chosen. We don't have to mm -hmm. think about that. Okay, no. you pick one. I'll pick the. <laughs> the we'll just, just <laughs> Paul. I'll pick Daisy. It's just yeah. It, I wins. mean, it, okay. Yeah, I, I, I am, I am just uh, completely uh, in awe of Paul's performance. Um, it is. It is so so multifaceted and the vulnerability that he is offering in like almost all of the scenes that he's in is just uh, amazing so i'm i'll pick paul you should watch his new movie i mean i hear it's very sad oh i don't want sad i don't want sad wait yeah look all you're going to get from Paul for a few years is sad. <laughs> <laughs> he does one thing, and it's sexy sadness. Oh. Um, I, I, though he's in Gladiator Two whenever that comes out, so he's going to do violent sadness. Uh, <laughs> I think that will always be a bit of sadness. <laughs> oh. Is he just? Does he just going to wind up being being you know having uh, pathos? Pathos, pathos. I don't. I think he can't help it. I yeah. Think he just inherited his entire bidding, being like <laughs> he could do like a comedy, and I'd be like, mm, "But are you secretly depressed?" <laughs> do we have tears um, of a clown going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh bit. my! That always happens. Yes. Um. Uh. I. I. I will pick Daisy Edgar Jones then because I thought yeah. her drunk was. Oh, amazing. Jesus. And, and then her hangover was even better. She, <laughs> she looked like she wanted to die. <laughs> yeah, she keeps stumbling out of the house. And it's just like, oh, shit. <laughs> you, you had one hell of a bad night, girl. <laughs> and And amazing. because, you know, she remembers everything. You know she's got to go out there and face the, oh, the shame. The, oh, she's got to she's got to face uh, Connell after her performance the night before, and he's <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh. oh okay don't don't get me started laughing again about that scene because oh sweet lord that was perfection. Yep. <laughs> this was a good episode. Uh, it really, really was. Uh, okay. 
costumes. costumes, hair, and makeup. No, makeup. We were just discussing how how well they did with the uh, the 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 day after. The day after was, but <laughs> her blue eyeshadow with the party. Yes. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. her whole her whole party outfit. Yeah, she like, looked uh, just spectacular. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, but also just like she's going to a fancy dress costume party. Yes, <laughs> everyone else is just wearing jeans you know? and a top, yeah. and then she's mm-hmm. dressed like she's about to perform at Woodstock. <laughs> uh, I think you you said last week like Stevie Nicks is like stand in or something yeah. like that, something like that. Yeah, I mean she she had that whole witchy vibe going. And, uh, you know, from head to feet looked amazing. Um, and, uh, whew, the yeah, next and day. And then even the robe she wore when she got back was like, mm-hmm. is there nothing, is there anything about what you wear that <laughs> isn't just, like, can you just wear something comfortable? It's like all such a costume. Like, oh, calm down. Well, you know, uh, she's got, you know, all this makeup and these clothes and, all of that stuff, you know, she's walking around with armor on, you know, I know that in the past, you know, I have referred to, you know, like when I do my whole full face of makeup as being, you know, my, the war paint, uh, (laughs) that, you know, you put on and, you know, there is a sense of, I don't know, safety or strength or something that goes along with, you know, having uh, spent time on a full, beautiful face of makeup. Um, because beauty that, is power in our society. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So, you know, she's walking around completely armored up um, in Ready all of these clothes. Ready to destroy Gareth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, baby Gareth. Oh, gosh. But yeah, that 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 is uh, where she's finding strength is in her garb, and uh, it was nice to see how that fell in Connell's see arms. What she wears yeah. next week. See if she starts dressing a little bit more like a human. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh gosh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, locations. I really want to talk about the house party location. Yeah. I mean, whoever the Sophie girl is, she got money, money, money. Yeah, she does. Uh, yeah, that was a beautiful. That was a beautiful house um, that you know basically got destroyed <laughs> by the, the the college house party. Um, Marianne's uh, apartment or townhouse or whatever the hell it is. I can't work out the. I don't know how. It, like, it's got a hall. It's got stairs. It's got a courtyard balcony. The bathroom is off the kitchen. It's just, it's huge. It's gorgeous. I don't think Um, it's a flat. It's two stories. That's a duplex. Yeah. It's, um, you know, in the book, you know, they're talking about, you know, going and picking out wallpaper, you know, for the the Dublin residents, because that's where Marianne is going to be living during her time at Trinity. but. You know, the the location that they chose for her home has got, I mean, who needs wallpaper? It's like shabby chic, you know, 301. <laughs> I also love that, it's, like, it's in beautiful. The book, they mentioned that it was her grandmother's place, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which makes so much more sense than if it was yes. her mother's, because her mother would have made that shit modern oh. as fuck. Oh, yeah. So Everything like would have been to... painted white. <laughs> white and everything at right angles and uh oh yeah the furniture would have been gone and there would have been like Tasteful. new yeah. yeah i just i love the vibe that's going on in in that home but uh, uh, they I they mean, did the a great job picking locations a bit of a redo, but okay. uh, yeah that yeah. shower oh i'm not sure <laughs> That's the one thing, you know. It, it it's looks not a little rickety. Anymore. That's the one yeah. thing. Like, I like old homes, but I like a new modern shower. Yeah. Yeah. 
I hate cleaning something that's 40 years old, you know, <laughs> the bodily fluids are involved. Bah! Exactly. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, gosh. But I did, oh, one more thing about the massive house was like how, right, it really felt American, <laughs> like mm-hmm. mid-century, like. Yes. Yes. It had this weird, I feel, did the, okay, am I crazy or did it have a sunken living room? Like you walk in and then you No, it down. did, yeah. Oh my yeah, god! It was, Who yeah. lives like that in in Dublin? <laughs> that's like something out of a movie. Yeah, that's yes. gonna be really fucking weird for Connell, who grew up in his tiny little <laughs> yes, itty bitty little place. Yes, and then he's going to like a, a house party where somebody like looks like they live in a movie set. That's insane. Oh god, that's crazy. Um, um, but yeah. They've done a great job with their lo- location, uh, uh, setting the locations for this. Fascinating. Oh, yeah. It was always so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I mentioned the music, the, we've okay. spoken a bit about the montage. Mm-hmm. The song playing is La Luna by Billy Martin. I really okay. love Never that montage. Never heard of it. Very beautiful. Yeah. It, was, it was a lovely montage, uh, uh, you know, and it was wonderful I seeing did. kind of what life what life in uh from Connell's perspective was like um you know and it's amazing that he's working all of these jobs and is still top of his class you know he's a wonder boy yeah he is well he was playing all of those um football matches and still coming top of his class so maybe he's just got like boundless Mm. energy yeah oh to be 18 oh god actually i just think about i just i just think about it and get exhausted no, I don't want to do that anymore. I'd rather just stay asleep. Um, yes. Also, during the party, like, this is so pedantic, but I am that person. <laughs> Welcome to this podcast. Um, the song, the Frank Ocean song they played. As a Frank yeah. Ocean fan, I was like, That's, that came out way later than when the show is set. <laughs> I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure that was like 2016. That's, that's too late for this. And um, they would have been. No, oh, uh, they, you know, they they missed it on that one. They really bit. did because I, mm-hmm. I was like, as again, like I said, I was a similar age at mm-hmm. this time, and I was playing the first Frank Ocean album, Channel Orange, iconic album, over and over <laughs> and over again. The summer it came out which mm-hmm. was 2012, mm-hmm. which would have been perfect. You could have just yep. chosen a song from that album. That was such a good <laughs> summer album. Ah. You're so close, but so far. Also, I don't know that a bunch of these white kids from Ireland would have been listening to Frank Ocean, but here we go. Um, anything you didn't like? No, I thought it was brilliant. I didn't like Jamie, but that's well, y- yeah, yeah. I, 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 I despise Jamie, but um, <sighs> more on that later. How many communist manifestos out of five? Oh, I think it's a five. I'm again going with 4.5. Oh, you're being so stingy. I know, but okay. <laughs> Full disclosure, the episode where they go to Italy, I'm saving my five. <laughs> oh, it's Italy. Well, okay. You have, you have advanced notice. Uh, you know, I may have to go off the, off the reservation. But you read and, the book, uh, you know they go to Italy. I, I mean, know they do, but you know. Can it's you like imagine this... how beautiful that's going to be? Oh yeah! When they've made Dublin look fucking magical, can you imagine what yeah. they do to Italy? <laughs> no offense to Dublin, but like you're not Italy. <laughs> Nowhere is Italy. Italy oh. is like this magical place that I don't like. Italy is so magical that they use it in a lot of fantasy shows. Uh huh. <laughs> Remember when they used it in Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, they look did. at this yeah. magical. <laughs> it's like that's it's <laughs> okay i may have to go to a six on that episode but uh you know i'll see when i get there it's not how the ranking works <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> okay uh time for the inbox um hi michelle and rita debbie from new york city here i discovered the podcast during season two of Bridgerton and have been a fan ever since. 
I really get a kick out of your banter and your insights are always spot on. Imagine my delight when you announced you'd be doing a podcast series on normal people, my obsession for some time now. Episode five was amazing. There are, of course, uh, the apology scene and the sex scene, but there are also these little moments that demonstrate how strongly these two characters connect and can be genuine with each other. For example, when Connell arrives at Marianne's apartment for the first time, the very short scene when she greets him at the door shows that they can be themselves with each other. He says, nice place. And she says, my hallway. And he says, yeah, the hallway's great. And she laughs. She is good naturedly ribbing him a little. And because he is safe with her, he doesn't need to have his defenses up. They share a laugh within a minute of seeing each other again. There are lots of little moments like this throughout the series, and I think the writers did an amazing job. And I need to just take a moment and praise Daisy Edgar Jones and Paul Mescal. They both possess a talent for being able to convey emotion with the tiniest of facial movements. In the apology scene, when Connell reveals that anxiety was at the root of the way he treated her, the camera is a close-up on Marianne's face, not Connell's. We see the tears rolling down her face. But when he says the word anxiety, she immediately looks up the tiniest bit and her face softens. She forgives him in that instant. Paul Mescal is a master at it too. To most people, it looks like Connell doesn't show a lot of emotion. But those of us who can pick up micro expressions know he is a deep feeler. In the opening scene of the episode, when Marianne calls Connell, he has no idea why she's calling. The moment she says, how nice it was to see you at the party. We feel the depth of Connell's relief, even though his expression has barely changed. The corners of his mouth go up the tiniest bit, and we know what he's thinking. I just got my best friend back, and my life is going to be okay now. That is some damn fine acting from both of them. The apology scene and the sex scene are amazing, and I look forward to hearing your thoughts on them. Before I sign off, I just need to take a moment of appreciation for Paul Mescal in that all black outfit <laughs> when they go to the party. Yeah. Swoon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Thanks for all the hard work you put into the podcast, Debbie. Thank, thank you, you Debbie. so much, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. That was a really beautiful email. And thank you for yes. buying us a coffee. Oh, she bought us thank a coffee. you. I could really use a coffee right now, but I'm not allowed (laughs) caffeine. (laughs) Oh, God. That's just cruel and unusual punishment. (laughs) As a Southern European, that's basically torture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seriously. (laughs) But thank (sighs) you. Yes. Uh, Hi, girls. Morgana here. So I think I'm going to stop wishing that the week goes well for you guys. (laughs) 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 And just wish you get by. (laughs) <laughs> Too dark a joke. The irony is that I've potentially had the worst week of my life. Oh. One of the worst weeks of my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I'm glad you're better, but I, I swear you could use another I look, week I off. I love a bit of the dark humor. But no. <laughs> look, I survived. This yes. is when we need like Beyonce to come and start singing. There we go. I'm a survivor. <laughs> uh, what is it that Beyonce had survived when she'd sung that song, by the way? I, I Since don't you were like know. 15. Calm down. <laughs> uh, the fifth episode was for me a warm heart. Seriously, why the series doesn't just end in, in this episode? <laughs> that was the That's best true. ending possible. That's true. Then we wouldn't get Italy. Uh, yeah, Connell yeah. apologized as best he could. Marianne waits five seconds to break up with her step boyfriend. <laughs> step boyfriend? <laughs> step boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> they got back together. Connell says he thinks they're going to be fine, and that's it. The curtains go down. End of the show. <laughs> that's not what happens, right, girls? Nope. <laughs> they play Adele at the end. Adele. That's not Adele. Again, just to clarify, no, this is that's not Adele singing. Doesn't matter that it's her cutest song, not her song either. It's actually <laughs> who is it? Make you feel my love by Anne Byrne. 
Ah. Also, Make You Feel My Love is not an Adele song. I will not have that. That's true. Um, it's a good cover, but... Yeah. And who did that song? Uh, that should be in my brain. Uh, who did that song originally? Oh, Bob Dylan. Is it Bob Serious? Dylan? Serious? I think no. it's Bob Dylan. Yeah, it's no. one of his... Bob Dylan always writes the songs, but he sings... I'm um, sorry to Bob Dylan fans. He sings oh. it so badly. And oh, then people just... cover it, and you go, oh, that's a nice song. Yeah. Although Adele has sung that song. Yes, but it doesn't sound anything like this. It, yeah. Adele sings, you know? Like, she's like Whitney. Mm-hmm. She can do a cover. She's going to yep. do, like, the singiest version yep. of that song. Yep. Anyway, I, we've got more of the off Okay. And this is the world's yes. longest podcast. Everyone knows. <laughs> That when that voice sounds, our heart will be destroyed. Again, still not Adele. After all, who listens to Adele to feel warm in their heart? Not Adele. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear her when you miss your ex. You can hear her when you want to tell your ex to go to hell. You can hear her when you are depressed. Oh God, this is all about Adele. This was not Adele. Adele is just for strong emotions, not for a peaceful day when you appreciate your beauty of being alive. <sighs> Please, yeah, I know. Maybe you, Michelle, or maybe Rita, are now disagreeing with me. Adele can also be for happy moments. No, I agree with you, but this wasn't Adele. Yes, this isn't Adele, right? No, <laughs> no. Adele is purely depressing. Uh, you're wrong. I'm right, and the producers of the series agree with me. After all, as we say in Brazil, from now on, it's only backwards. <laughs> I think we say that everywhere. It seems to me that at the end of the episode, we reached the pinnacle. <laughs> it's going to keep the face on my G. Yes. Climax. And the next episodes are downhill. Oh, God. But no. can we stay in it a little longer? After all, the episode's so good. Hey, look, the next few episodes yes. are some of the best television you'll ever see. Let's, awesome. Okay. Let's. It's. It's not all fun and games, but they go to Italy. <laughs> you are really pitching this Italy trip I'm hard. I'm sorry. The Italy so... episode is iconic, and you will love it, okay? Okay. I, okay. I just I... hope I'm not disappointed after you've hyped it up so much. I but... can't see how you put, do you like Italy? <laughs> I, I do. I've never been. I would like to go. It's going to make you want to go. Um, again, please uh, go to our Buy Me a Coffee page and <laughs> where you can pay for our trip to Italy. Me and Michelle will eat gelato in the exact spot where they do in the show and then take photos of it and tell you, oh, we're really hot, it's too hot in Italy. Um, <laughs> as always, she continues, as always, I will tell you my first reaction to this episode back in 2020. After all, what makes this series so special is that it brought things into its narrative which at least i saw for the first time on tv through and in this episode it was connell's apology using actual words yes he uses examples mm-hmm. do your own psychological analysis of why i know mm-hmm. again he's doing the bare minimum <laughs> but <laughs> this minimum was never really done by the male leads of a romance or in TV. She's making the same point we did. Yes, so indeed. You get us. You get us. Even if you don't know when Adele is singing. Um, okay, <laughs> Mr. Darcy did. Yeah, but that's why he's the leading male of the period drama romance. Yes. So just to name a few that you've already podcasted about, <laughs> Ross Poldock from the series doesn't do a proper apology to Chelsea <laughs> in the end of oh, series two. God. Look, do you know how many hours of our lives we've dedicated to complaining about <laughs> Ross not apologising? <laughs> I swear we hit over 200 hours. <laughs> uh, Sydney and Alexander from Sanderton each screw over Charlotte in different ways and just stare at her with the pitying eyes of Puss in Boots from Shrek movies. Uh, Simon never apologizes to Daphne for letting her think he couldn't have children instead of that he didn't want to, at least not with words. To be fair, he did get raped. Like, yeah, yeah. Downer. Yeah. But... <laughs> I'm going to give Simon a pass on this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Words are oh. does, she, does Daphne ever apologise? No, Daphne I don't think so. Apologize? Okay, so we're going to put think Daphne so. under the not apologising either then. She can yeah. just sit there with Simon. Words are important. <laughs> 
discuss the overall themes of the series. Using words to relate creates intimacy. Being able to put feelings into words generates connection, empathy, and makes life experiences guided by anxiety and abuse become lighter. Go to therapy. Um, but yeah. mainly, it brings maturity and change for the future of our characters. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I watched this episode... I knew she was going to get back together with him. And I was thinking, just another idiot girl in the world, because no, the scene of Connell drunk crying and calling her at the end of the episode didn't convince me that he deserved another chance. Same girl. <laughs> I love it when she doesn't waste a second to throw the phrase about friends in his face. At the end of the day, they're my friends. A phenomenal moment when she's direct with him and says, because I was strength of character she has to have to use the right words instead of trying to soften it since she clearly wants to get back with him she didn't try to soften it for him or make the conversation easier she used the right words he humiliated her he made her accept less than she deserved and his response when he specifies that he was the one who applied the humiliation yes he waited months to have this conversation but when he did he didn't shy away from responsibility he took responsibility and got the impression that he was waiting for the right moment and the perfect way to have this conversation. In the end, what was more important in postponing the conversation was the search for the perfect form than to escape it, than the escape of it. Maybe I'm projecting. That was my impression about him. <laughs> He's an overthinker. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that made me laugh. No, that made me cough. Yeah, just just slightly. <laughs> I think it's so important that the scene starts with his comment about trying on a thousand versions of himself to try to fit in to be accepted or just not feel so outside the group. I think the biggest difficulty for us being with social us beings with social phobia who prefer to be among books is that we can't be ourselves in social encounters. Because we feel like aliens, as if we're watching everything from the outside. And this only gets worse when we find ourselves in environments where we clash or differ. And that's all Connell does at the college. Because there, the standards is to be rich, to have giant houses, use drugs, and not give a damn about actually studying. He works, worries about paying for rent, meeting deadlines from college, and really guarantees a future for him himself. Um... And being a person with real reasons for concern, surrounded by people who have no idea of that, re of this reality exists, that this reality exists. Uh, trying not to weigh things down with their serious questions about having money or lunch, or for lunch, or to eat at dinner, while pretending to find funny the male alphas competition about a pool <laughs> game, while they'd rather. Literally, you shoot yourself in the head than hear Jamie make yet another sexist <laughs> comment. Projecting again, perhaps. I know it's very difficult not to cry along with Marianne when he asks her if she would agree to go to the Debs with him. It's even harder when he asks and waits for her to look at him in the eyes to say he's sorry. And we're just seeing the emotion in Daisy's eyes of his words. My God, she's a very good actress. <laughs> um, after this scene, we already know what will happen. Marianne hits on Connell in such a shameless and sexy way that even I would say yes to her. <laughs> I don't know, man. I would not in that moment. She was too fucked up. Oh, yeah. Too hot. Connell doesn't have a chance, and he's so fucking cute at the same time. Okay, I need to stop gushing about it and finish this email. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all, but I'm sure you guys already covered the other stuff. Bye, girls. I hope you have a lovely day. Morgana. <laughs> Thanks, Mar Thanks, Morgana. Um, hey, Rita and Michelle, I love this episode. It's all about the eyes between these two. God, the lighting in the apology scene really intensifies his blue eyes. I mean, it was hard not to notice. And Marianne, too, I'll bite brown, but just as beautiful. Big eyes emoji. Uh, finally, they are truly communicating. Connell admits he's finding it hard to find who he is. Which version of Connell is he? adjusting and reconciling his old and new life, as well as grappling with how his personality is in a state of flux. He's struggling a little, but at least he's saying it out loud. Then to really bring it home, Marianne finally tells him how humiliating it all was, school and how he treated her. 
he then then he finally confesses his guilt about it and finally an apology and she gives her forgiveness poor marianne she is reliving the experience many young women go through but at least she gets a sincere apology if you didn't cry or feel anything here you shouldn't be watching this show great scene loved how he waited for her until dawn to take her home after after her drinking herself to oblivion kissing him and crashing at the party all but then again with those eyes that look he gives her when she approaches him in her dressing gown after her shower those eyes were quite emotional and seemed to say i need all of you heart and soul it felt more than sexual but a real connection on an emotional level because as they realize it's not like this with anyone else and by the way in the last scene she definitely isn't the cold-hearted woman devoid of feelings and soul that dumped her boyfriend earlier and neither is connell let's hope this is a good turn of events really enjoying this by the way i'm watching a new uh one day series on netflix which is a similar vein to this but i must give a perhaps unpopular opinion i think normal people is better acted and executed sorry not sorry ciao ciao maria thanks maria thanks maria I have not started the one-day series because I read Me the book. Neither. I watched the movie. Do I really need a series? Do we need to keep making... I uh, know this is hypocritical. I keep wanting more and more Jane Austen adaptations. But <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need a series. We didn't need it. <sighs> time for anyway, hello, Michelle and Rita. Hello. I watched episode five and I thought that maybe Connell and Marianne will finally be a couple. Womp womp. <laughs> Uh-huh. Marianne called Connell to be in her life again. That was so sweet. And he said yes. I'm so happy for these two. Yet, these two are very complicated people and for now want different things. Marianne so wants to be in a relationship with him, but Connell doesn't know what he wants. When I realise Connell thinks he's not good enough, Marianne, that's why he is reluctant to be in a relationship. And Marianne opens her heart to him so easily. But Connell can be swayed by any girl. Hmm. He's not swayed by any girl, but literally like the minorest of circumstances. <laughs> He's not a player. But pretty girls flirting with him. Oh, it's because of Teresa. Like, oh, yeah. Fair enough, though. She had a boyfriend. Like, what's she? She's going to wait around for him. Um, yeah. He's not a player, but pretty girls flirting with him. And. It's on to the walk of shame in the morning. The pool scene where... Also, I was wondering if you all have seen The Duchess with Kira Knightley and Ralph Fiennes. Like we'd miss it. <laughs> Will you ever do a podcast on The Duchess? It has wonderful costumes and hairstyles. Have a great weekend, Delia. Delia, that's an excellent idea we should do. Yes. Yes. I, mean, I think what we should do is have like a Kira Knightley marathon. She's Ooh. the queen of period dramas. Very Duchess. true. Very the, true. The Duchess of period dramas. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Um, oh, let's six, see. Anyway. Episode six. What do we have in store for us? All right. So episode six summary. Uh, Connell and Marianne are together. But when he loses his job and she has an upsetting trip home, they withdraw from each other. Uh, if you are reading along with the episode, then this uh, episode covers pages 94 through 120, uh, and then it's uh, chapter 10 and 11 uh, in the audiobook. Don't be teenagers and try and have a relationship. It's just not going to work. That's Okay, that is all from us this episode. And it was a lot. <laughs> we'll be back next week discussing episode 6. If you want to get involved in the podcast, we well, then you can email us at inthebooksnetwork at gmail.com on insta so please follow if you want fun bonus content and updates on the podcast or you know if i've puked recently i'm also giving <laughs> puke updates if you enjoy oh. this pod please rate review and tell your friends thank you and see you next time goodbye bye, bye.